Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be going through the top in demand tech jobs that don't require coding. We talk a lot about coding on this channel and I mean tech in general, but I wanted to highlight some of the roles that are really in demand that require little to, no, not little, no coding at all for the job itself. Before we go any further though, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech related videos. Also, shout out to some of these subscribers here. Thank you, as always, for your support, your comments, your questions. You know the drill, but I gotta shout you out because I really appreciate you. Okay, let's get started. If you are seeking out a job in the tech industry and the first thing that comes to mind is, well, I don't know how to code, so this probably isn't for me, please, please reconsider and think again. There are so many great roles in the tech industry that essentially coding and jobs in coding make such a small portion of that, really any skills that you currently have can be transferred into the tech industry. Tech industry needs marketing, they need, um, what are some other non-tech skills? Marketing, advertising, design, you know the drill. We're gonna get to them right now, but please keep that in mind that whatever skills you have, even accounting, accounting, tech companies need accounting. Uh, whatever skills you have, it can be transferred into the tech industry. That being said though, I wanted to share with you today some of the most in-demand, non-coding tech jobs that you can get that pay really well, are really in-demand, so you can easily land them fast. The first on the list is UI or user interface. UI is sometimes grouped with UX, user experience. However, they are a little bit different. UI itself focuses more on the emphasis of the design on the interface. Some of the responsibilities include visual design through each stage from brainstorming to engineering, having clear communication of ideas and instructions and well-designed wireframes, storyboards, user flows, and sitemaps, and making the interface a cohesive whole by intentionally designing each element of the site or web app to ensure they all work together. And that brings me to number two, which is user experience. User experience designers create products with the end user in mind. Their really end goal is to ensure that when a user goes through the product, they have a seamless experience. A few key responsibilities include user research, understanding users through different kinds of interviews, phone calls, information architecture, knowing the most effective ways to structure content, data-driven design, making design choices based on data, and wireframing and prototyping. The third on the list is SEO specialist or search engine optimization. And the SEO specialists really collaborate closely with developers, designers, to make sure that keywords are being implemented and embedded into the websites. Common responsibility for SEO specialists include researching keywords, working with content teams to drive SEO and content creation, optimizing copy on pages to improve search engine ranking, and tracking, reporting, analyzing website analytics. Next up on the list is technical support. Sometimes technical support requires specific degrees based on what technology you are supporting with. However, overall, a technical support person really needs to know a specific product inside and out. So though you don't need to be extremely technical all around or have coding skills, you need to know your company's product. And of course, there's different trainings for that and be able to walk users step by step, be very empathetic with them, understanding uh, where they're stuck on, why they're stuck on, have really good troubleshooting skills. Some common requirements for a technical support specialist would include having strong communication skills, having strong problem solving skills, and also being able to pick things up as they go. A lot of times customers will call in with unique problems and you need to be able to troubleshoot on the go. Number five on the list is technical recruiter. And yes, we have been there. We have, I'm sure some of you have been there experiencing not the greatest technical recruiters. One time I had someone ask me, oh, I see you have JavaScript on your resume. How well do you know Java? And uh, it's an awkward experience. But technical recruiters, you don't need to have coding or a technical background. That being said, it is important to brush up on different terminology and uh, the tech stack that is used at the place you are recruiting for. So although you don't need to know the ins and outs, you have an understanding as to uh, what the technologies are that you are looking for in other people with their skill set. 
And next on the list is a very lucrative one, which is enterprise software sales. And this is very lucrative as you are, well, essentially it's SaaS and you're working at a tech company selling their products to other companies. So yes, you need to know once again, their products inside and out. And, but you also need to have that flair, that kind of salesperson pitch and side of you that likes to go out there and hunt down other people and go through that whole sales process. Um, but of course, as I mentioned, the reward to that is extremely lucrative. However, it's important to note though that high reward often comes with high risk, uh, quotas, high pressure, high stakes negotiations, and oftentimes a lot of extensive travel for this role. Okay, next on the list is something that it's not necessarily where my career path, well, it's not where my career path is going, but I find really interesting, which is business development. Business development is essentially an activity or idea that aims to make a business or company better over time. So for example, it means making use of customers, acquiring new customers, implementing strategic partnerships, using your existing and new markets, and really essentially building a solid reputation for your company. Okay, now that we've covered some of the most in-demand tech jobs that require no coding skills, I want to talk a little bit about what is required to land these jobs. And I wanna start off by saying that there actually is no formal or specific degrees or masters or PhDs or anything like that that are absolutely required to land any of these jobs. And I think that's one of the best things about being part of the tech industry or if you're someone even considering breaking into the tech industry is that it's more so based on skills and knowledge and experience rather than formal education. And although sometimes this can be not a great thing, I'm sure in some situations, it really gives everyone a chance to break into the industry. And okay, you're probably saying now, Tiff, you said experience, but if I'm just breaking in and I don't have that experience, what do I do? And that brings me to my next thing, which is start reaching out, reach out to people, reach out to companies, start reaching out and building your own experience. It's not going to come to you by you just sitting there and worrying. You really need to take actions into your own hands. And even when I was starting out, for example, my experience was building websites for my mom and dad. Like my dad owned a construction company growing up and in turn, I would make, uh, when I was learning how to code, I would make different kind of websites for him that he would never actually use or show his clients. And that's probably a good thing because they probably looking back were not that great, but um, making my own experience. And I really suggest that for you as well. If you are looking to get into any of these roles, you can always kind of make your own experience, even if it's through friends and family. For example, if you are interested in UI and UX, but you know, due to time or money, all of the above, you can't go back to school for it, start making your own experience. And this can be even done by, you know, taking some courses online, um, making some side projects for UI, UX things that you're really interested in. Like how would you want an application to function based on what it currently is? You know, like if you were to remake Instagram, what are some things you would change for the design side of things? And start really getting creative because employers really like to see that, that you're taking initiative, you're you know making these projects, making experience for yourself. That stuff really goes a long way and I think people can really see that. Okay, we have covered a lot in this video from some of the most in-demand tech jobs that don't require coding, some kind of ways to get experience for them. And I'm just kind of curious, I want to know if you were, if you are someone who is in a, job right now that requires coding, if you were to move into a job that does not require coding, what would it be? And another question I want to ask is for those of you who are not coders, what is your job? I want to know what do you do for a living and what do you want to do? Or is it what you're currently doing? I'm really curious to know. So leave in the comments what it is you do, what is your dream job? And I think it'd be kind of fun. For myself, you know, I'm a software developer and my dream job Mm, is probably that just because it's so flexible and um, I really like the flexibility and being able to one day when things open up travel again. Okay, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding related videos and I will see you all soon. Thanks everyone.